for the night is Casey Buna, and she's going to tell you all about herself, so I won't even try. Um, so here she is, and I will pass presenting to her. And Riverside Medical Clinic, Charitable Foundation, for having me this evening. And thank you also to all the patients and their supporters for joining us this evening. I'm so sorry for the delay. I hope you will find this presentation helpful. And I'm just going to work on switching screen. about myself. Growing up, I had always been a people person and enjoyed doing service and community service and advocacy work. So I decided to go to school for social work and up studying social work in both my undergraduate and graduate studies. Out of school, I went to work at an all-girls school and did counseling and ran support groups. And in time, that my own health started declining. My hair was struggling with infertility, and on top of that, Started having many of the endometriosis symptoms we are all familiar with. Painful periods, stomach issues, fatigue, just to name a few. It's a long, confusing, heartbreaking journey to receive a proper like many of you have experienced, and a specialist who is truly educated in endometriosis. I started being in the community and connecting with other patients in the endometriosis and infertility community, I that my own delay in diagnosis and my own challenges in getting proper treatment was something almost everyone else struggled with. And I knew that my social work skills could be useful in the community. So I started working in the community. So talking to many, many patients, I'd be helpful to make a video about the shared experiences of patients and how it impacted not only our physical health, but also how it profoundly infected our emotional well-being. I actually made a longer video, which you can see a picture of up on the screen. Um, it was called Endo Truths, the Impact of Endometriosis and Infertility on Mental Health. What was really neat is at this time I was really involved in the online endometriosis committee community and I called out to patients and said, Hey, I'd like to come fill pa film pa patient experiences. And the amazing patients showed up and they shared their stories. In review in reviewing all of the footage, and this is actually um the your video, but in reviewing all the footage Footage, what I realized is that what we had to do was make two videos. Everything that all the patients had to say. Because from a social justice perspective, I found that the delay in diagnosis was absolutely unacceptable. They expressed how angry and devastated they were. Really had a message to medical providers, earnestly challenging them to provide better care for patients. Being diagnostic delay, ending better treatment. And I tried to show this video tonight because I think we can all relate to these brave patients who shared their stories. And it includes a lot of talk about diagnostic delay and the impact it has. Let me put on the video. Okay. There no truth messages to the medical community from endometriosis patients. And I want to give a warning that there are maybe three curse words in the video. And I like the patients were so passionate and they were making wonderful points. And um, so I kept it. But I just want to, I always like to give that warning before I show it. There it is.
before I finally got to the doctor and said, no, that, that's not the normal pain. It's um, the endometriosis. And it wasn't until I went to my next student that I powered I have seen 
back down to the American Hebrew and the woman uh, crying and I was like, I'm not leaving because I hurt so bad. And he looked at me and said, nobody cries this much if you're that much Don't take it real because if I can down, down, I function, I can't lean on one side. Like, this is probably there's something that's really, really wrong. Uh, I had another doctor ask me, because I'm the youngest of uh, three uh, children.
2018, I was given the the clinic facility, which I feel was a hard pill to swallow because we had tried everything and all the medicines for the previous diagnosis and none of it worked. But when we stopped treatment back in 2013, my periods had gone back to being very heavy, very painful. Nobody except my current OBGYN here has even brought up um, endometriosis as a possibility. When I feel like they wasted some years, and kind of get out of it. I mean, you put all that money and people aren't willing to explore all the options with you. And, you know, it's just, it's hard to um, it's really hard to think about everything that I've been through and how it could have been different health for my family and for everything.
beginning of our fertility journey through when I met my surgeon. Oh. 
offers out there with so little bit, whether it's 13, 25, look like think about entry of success in actual chronic disorder and not as just infertility, not as just discover when people want to have children. Educate is most important to that as my medical professional.
recently. I'm so grateful to the Chins for being so brave, for sharing their story. And I do a really good job in talking about the reasons for the delays in diagnosis and also the. Hi guys. Oh, sorry. It's Miss Kanishma. Long time no see. So I've been going for two years. I have made a video in two years. Ooh, I'm sorry. Another sorry about that. I go back to the hand. Okay, so I think the patients did a really good job in talking about reasons for delays in diagnosis and the impact it's on a patient. And I think there are two main reasons for reasons for delays in diagnosis. And one of them is a general lack of awareness for endometriosis throughout society. And there is a dangerous lack of awareness and misinformation amongst the medical community. The lack of awareness for endometriosis throughout society, which correlates to a general lack of support for patients. I thought I'd um, bring in fellow advocate Shannon Cohen. I love her documentary, And a What? If you haven't seen it already, I highly suggest it. It is a powerful tool in helping to educate society and the medical community. And this is a quote by her, that endometriosis is arguably the most common debilitating disease that most people have never heard of. Do not know what endometriosis is. I'm sure you've all experienced that when you say, oh, I have endometriosis, and they kind of look at you with a blank stare. Part of that is that there are a stigma surrounding endometriosis. Um, it's a women's disease. It's a disease that's often associated with periods and reproductive lady parts, even though it can impact many systems in the body. The, the symptoms can include painful periods, diarrhea, painful intercourse, and other symptoms that are always easy to talk about. Or if you're willing to talk about them, some people may shy away from hearing about them. I feel like other, other diseases have societal recognition, which I think really helps in getting patients to see doctors. For example, two years ago, a friend, say, had a small lump on their breast and told their best friend. Um, 60 years ago, that friend would say, you have to go to the doctor right away to get it checked. It could be breast cancer. It could be serious. They changed, and everyone knows it could be a sign of something more serious that needs to be looked at. You mentioned painful periods. Nobody really thinks of endometriosis. Is it a serious or an invasive disease? In fact, you might likely run the risk of having your pain dismissed or normalized. And I know endometriosis can be genetic. It, you know, pass along. Um, you know, a mother has it, I think, or a sister, aunt, daughter, niece, seven times more likely to have it. So when painful periods are normalized, you know, might say to her daughter, oh, well, I had painful periods, it's normal. Or you can't have painful periods, that sometimes just happens. So we're working on changing that. Um, I so diagnostic delays, and the patients in the video did a really good job explaining this, a lack of awareness and misinformation amongst the medical community. And I love, we're currently petitioning the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists to change standards and promote more education among their providers. Someone wrote this on the petition, and I thought it explained a lot. They said, how is it that you can go to a new hairdresser and explain your symptoms? And he can say, sounds to me true, sis. But you go to your OBGYN for years without proper diagnosis. 
and the biblical community can dismiss symptoms. Patients are told they have a low tolerance for pain. Patients are told that women experience unpleasant periods, often normalizing the pain when it is not normal. Community fails to recognize symptoms of endometriosis, which can lead to a lack of diagnosis or a misdiagnosis of endometriosis. And we saw that with the patients in the video. Some of them would have STDs. Some of them were thought to be drug addicts, that they were faking it. Some thought, um, got diagnosed with IES. And so I've been through, um, I've been misdiagnosed for years as well before I got a diagnosis. And then sometimes patients will be accused of having psychiatric issues, that they're making up their pain or that their pain exists in their head. The wisdom And we saw that too in the video where uh, one of the patients was told that she's too young for, uh, too young to have endometriosis. Uh, patients say, patients have been told that they're too old to have di um, endometriosis. Um, who have hysterectomies are told they can no longer suffer from the disease. Patients are told if they get pregnant, they'll no longer suffer. They're told that surgery can just make things worse or that they shouldn't be treated until they're ready to have children. All of these myths lead to a delay in getting care and get diagnosis. I think that the community struggles with it, not all self-proclaimed specialists are specialists, often delaying diagnosis and or treatment. Now, a lot of times, patients will come to me and say that, and this happened myself, I went to a lab and my doctor said, oh, you just have a little bit of endometriosis. It's no big deal. It's all taken care of. It's not a problem. And yet pain persists. The problems get worse. I feel sicker and sicker. And they'll go on to see another specialist, a true specialist, and realize they have stage four endometriosis, that they have endometriosis throughout their pelvis and sometimes even extra pelvic disease. And that leads to obviously more physical suffering, but it can also lead to emotional suffering. It's very traumatic for patients, cause them to sometimes undergo multiple partial and ineffective surgeries, which brings us to impact of delay in diagnosis. I think the patients in the video talked a lot about the impact of delay in diagnosis. Um, but I'd like to talk about, and you know what, I'll read this little vignette. This is in from the petition. And so she said, I'm in half of my senior year of high school because of the pain from this disease. My gynecologist at the time refused to help excuse the absent days because she also refused to give me the diagnosis. I have had surgery, but no conclusion from her. I was told over and over how I was making it worse than it really was. Having invasive chronic disease that impairs quality of life can lead to struggles with anxiety and depression. Of endometriosis patients struggle with infertility, which too can lead to depression and anxiety in and of itself. And diagnosis, you have medical professionals and people in your community telling you you were crazy or hypochondriac or tough enough, being dismissed and told you were fine, it feels like you were being stabbed in the pelvis repeatedly. All this obviously adds even more to the anxiety and depression that a patient can feel. And a thing of trauma and loss. Um, we often tell patients is also a mistrust of the medical community. I'll get into loss and trauma um, a little later in my slide, but I also want to talk about. Um, mistrust of the medical community. It happens to a lot of patients is of their experience of being told everything's okay and go to the doctor not having any answers. There's fear of doctors, of going to doctors. 
their trust of the medical advice of doctors. Doctors will believe how serious endometriosis is once you are diagnosed. And of itself is a huge burden to carry with us. Obviously, we often have co-occurring illnesses that need to be addressed. It's a community that often needs to go to doctors a lot, but there's also this mistrust and fear of doctors. So the idea of, is the doctor going to believe me, and can the doctor help me is real, and it happens especially with every new doctor's appointment. So to carry with us every single day on top of not feeling so well, where do we go from here? How do we process these feelings? How do we work through them? And how do we um, thrive with this disease? So, feeling. I love this quote, and it's Dolly Parton, who is a fellow endometriosis patient, so I found it um, very meaningful. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. I feel like this is true for so many endometriosis patients. We have to inform ourselves and educate ourselves and own path through so accepting endometriosis and all that comes with it. What I work with patients a lot and what I talk to patients a lot as a social worker the importance, and what I did myself as a patient, is the importance of taking time to grieve, understanding that there is a grieving process in having endometriosis before fully accepting the disease. I learned a lot in social work school about the stages of loss and grieving, and stages of denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and the final stage acceptance. I feel strongly that we can apply the quality of life that many of us experience to this philosophy. Me coming to acceptance wasn't being happy about my disease or being at peace with it, but really acknowledging that it exists as a reality in my life that I cannot change, which me to my next point. Or ties your life with endometriosis in mind. What endometriosis mean? And what does having this disease mean? And I love this cartoon. And this cartoon is used by a dog with a room on fire, but he's just sitting there saying, this is fine. Everything's fine. And I'm like, this is me when I have my period, yet I'm still insisting on carrying all eight grocery bags into my home at once from the car, even though it feels like my uterus is trying to escape my body. And back to the bargaining or denial part of accepting the disease. I tell them to remember that they have a chronic illness, which they don't have to do at all. I'm a firm believer that this finds you, the, but you have to understand um, this place it has in, in your life and sort of, I tell patients to remember if there's something that has to be done, you know, can someone help you, or can you plan it for a time when you're not ovulating or on day two of your cycle? And this is I can say to people in your life, who gets energy, who takes your energy away? So try to limit your time around people who suck the life out of you or excessively negative. That's unavoidable, right? You do things in life, and you have to be around people in life that not be actually well for you physically or emotionally, but try to plan on that and, and do care when you need to be put in those situations. Or I also would tell patients to protect yourself that you are amazing. So be choosy about where and with whom you give your precious, precious energy, which brings me to my next point. Help with love and compassion. Love, have limitless compassion for yourself. Um, I say this quote in the picture uh, all the time. Um, treat yourself as you would treat others. And I know it's usually the other way around. Patients tell, will tell me all the time that they feel guilty for feeling sick and not being able to do certain things for certain people or if they are coworkers or giving them a hard time for 
thing say you can't make it to Uncle Steve's holiday party, which is a three hour drive, and you're not feeling well, you're vomiting, and you have horrible cramps. Ivations, if this is your best friend feeling sick, being able to go to the party, would you tell feel bad, or would you say, hey, it's okay? Way to them, what is the compassion and the love you would show for your daughter, mother, niece, and and with them, you would probably say to them, it's okay. So tell yourself, treat yourself with the same understanding and compassion that you owe others. I think it's so important to connect with other patients who have the disease and know how you're feeling. Uh, this is a wonderful online support group. There are other online support groups that I love and cherish. And there are even some in-person support groups in your city. So seek them out. And seek out a... We about multidisciplinary care and how it's so important to put that in place and you know think of having a mental health provider as part of that team because there is so much that with us emotionally and it's good to have someone to talk to. And so many other patients, Ed empowered how patients can impact systemic change. And a, lot, and a lot of strength and a lot of empowerment through being involved in the endometriosis community. I have patients to become your own best advocate. Don't to tell others what you need. Doctors, family, friends, everyone. Your disease is real and your needs are real. And about the disease and offer support and information to those around you and me that you see are suffering. There are a lot of you, uh, if you've talked about your disease, all of a sudden you'll get calls or different emails from random people saying, hey, I hear you know about this disease. I find it wonderful to pass on any information or support that I have given years in the I some encourage patients to reach out to past doctors who may have misinformed or misdiagnosed you. It doesn't have to be super confrontational, even if you just want to write a letter or say next time you're in the office, say, hey, you know, I got the surgery. I definitely brought my excision surgery report to a doctor who did my first ablation and said, look, this is possible. This is done. This is what you need to think about referring other patients to because it has helped improve my quality of life. I have patients to some nonprofits in the community who are doing great work. There are some wonderful nonprofits out there. And it's so empowering to get more involved with this community and work together with others to try and create change. And lastly, um, I'm going to plug the petition to ACOG. I mentioned it earlier. A petition to the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists to change their policies and educate their members so that endometriosis patients will have better and quicker access to quality care. And it's on my website. And there are also other advocacy initiatives that I support from others in the community. I'd love to work with all of you. I think if we continue to work as a community, our voice is that much stronger. Delayed diagnosis is hard physically and emotionally. Many of us spend years, years being told we are crazy, being dismissed and suffering in silence. It is not to internalize all of this and impact how we view ourselves. I'm working with endometriosis patients for a while now. I say that I feel like they are the strongest, most resilient, most beautiful souls I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. So I have to end with this quote as a reminder of that. And that's for my official presentation. So I'd be happy to answer. I try to hurry along because I know we started late. And I patients, we don't have a whole lot of time and energy. But I'd be happy to answer any questions. And Thank you so much, Casey. So if you guys look on the right side, there's a Q&A part where you you can type in your questions, and I can read them to Casey and have them answered for you. So, read our first question. Our first question is, 
Do you think there'd be as much of an issue diagnosing endometriosis if it was a men's health issue? <laughs> I do not. I I, mean, I feel years, although it's it's changing, right? Women are getting more positions of power and influence and have worked hard for decades and there have been endometriosis advocates that have been working for decades to change this and are have actually paved the road that I am walking on right now. But I guess men had a disease and I feel like the husband in the video said this, if it was a men's issue, if men had a disease where they had diarrhea and or constipation, if intercourse was painful for them, you know, if doctors the solution was to uh you know sort of remove all their reproductive parts, like that was the, I'm sure they would want better solutions and they would want quicker diagnosis. I really do think it would be a whole different ballgame. Our next question is, how to explain endo to people who don't know what endo is? Good question. So I usually give the definition of endometriosis as just similar to that when the uterus and the uterus and is can exist in a pain spells and bladder anywhere throughout the the pelvis and it causes trim amount of pain, it causes fatigue, infertility and and invasive disease that patients often deal with for decades. Thank you. I have more people thank you. <laughs> but here's is the no question. So thank you so much, Casey, for joining us. And I think one more question. We'll ask this one. How to tell friends and families you can't do, do something? And I feel like this is especially hard to type gender stereotype, but I feel this is especially hard for women. I feel like we're all expected to go above, above and beyond. Think of it as if I had another serious illness that they were more familiar with, they would be putting this pressure on me. So it's not my problem that they're uneducated and misinformed. So just this on worrying about myself and my own needs. So to say, I'm so sorry, I'm not feeling well, I can't do this. And I need to let go of all of the guilt about what they're going to think of me. Because at the end of the day, I have to love and give energy to myself in order to be present in my life. Our question is, do you have any advice on how to balance endometriosis and a full-time job? It's hard. And for many patients, they're go to their, they go to their full-time job and then pretty much often will go deep. <laughs> Six or seven o'clock. Um, I utilize any resources available within the company. Um, utilize cities. Utilize if you're not feeling well and if you have a sick day to try to use it. Um, utilize vacation days. Try to um, try to sell here in as you can. Do things. I encourage patients often to make a list of things that give them energy and things that take away energy. I mean, a full-time job takes up a lot of energy and time. So the rest of the time, try to things that give energy, give you love, give you peace, make you happy, um, prioritize self-care, and, and just try to survive it. It's, it's really hard. Get the support that you can get 
multidisciplinary care and, and try to put yourself for as much as possible. But it is, it's a, it's a struggle. All right, so next question is, how do you manage your endo? Do you have any tips on for how to eat to how to de-stress? So when I see a decision surgery, that helped a lot. And uh, I found a lot of re relief in that. But I still struggle. Emotions, I now have fibroids. I have an issue. I have a genomyosis. So even if you excise the end of off and there are other is or maybe, you know, do something right. So what I did you is I through no set endo diet, but for me eating gluten dairy soy helps a lot, but it doesn't help all patients, but for me that has really helped. I try to time I try to pay attention to my body. If I'm in a lot of pain, I'll try to you think like, like, like things in my life that I put on hold for now. Um, I try to pay attention to my body and be gentle with my body. Um, Judoga pelvic floor therapy has been helpful. Your, I don't know. It's all. There's a lot of things you can try and do, but it's still it's still hard, and life is not perfect. I think it's great how you talk, talked about like listening to your body and um, caring for it and giving it what it needs. So thank you so much for sharing all of this and from sharing your experience and um, all of your knowledge. And um, thank you to all of our participants for watching along and engaging with us. And um, we look forward to you guys joining us again next month with our next great speaker. And a big thank you again to um, our speaker tonight. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a good evening, everyone.